I'm gonna step in and I'm looking at my back leg. Make sure it's still there. That's good. Okay, step in, look at my back leg. Where your hands are actually does not matter. Okay, the way it was explained to me by, um, it's actually explained to me by Greg. Uh, Greg Nelson. I don't know if you know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> big deal. Uh, I can but, make you doubt about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could be here. It could be double bicep control. It could be underhooks. It doesn't matter. I can do this double bicep control and get the same result. Okay. And you see a lot of that with shorter tie fighters because they don't want to get elbowed. Mm -hmm. So we monitor the biceps. Okay. So it's the same. So the hand position is not as important as where your hips are. And the biggest thing I'm seeing is people are stepping. Remember that first thing we talked about? Well, we need to bring in our hips. I need to pull the person on top of me. So when you step, I really want to break down their base. I'm seeing a lot of people step like here. Did your base change? No. No, exactly. This is where we want to be. Does everyone see that? Yes. Now, just look over your back leg. It's very, it's very easy. Now, if he bases, I'm like, oh, but, he, but I'm not dumping him. That's okay. If he bases, what does that mean I have? The knee. You can't have both. So either I'm going to base, which gives me space to hit you, or you cannot base and I dump you. Okay? You can't have everything. Okay? So the goals are a little different in the tie coach, but it's still, it's off balance to hit. And it's a lot about the grappling structures and where your head position is. Okay? So this is really tight, which is good. But when someone starts to like pummel inside on you, then we'll, we'll, we'll finish with plumb escapes at the end. So that way no one gets like jacked up. Okay? <laughs> but I want to teach this because this is, I think, a lot of what's missing for a lot of Americans. Okay? Because this is what the ties are very, very good. Okay, cool. So let's keep working this. Back. Now back. Okay. So I want to get to the side. Okay. All right. You want to be in front of someone. It's a really good way to think about the hand positioning. So this is inside, inside center line. This would be the plum. This would be bicep control. This would be head and bicep. Okay. This would be other hooks. This is controlling center. Line. This is. Full, so this is to the side. My arm is inside, the other one is underneath. This is half, this is quarter. Okay? This is also a this. Is that what see? Well, the one we just worked on. Okay? It's also this, depending on your height. For the half, the half is here if you're longer, or it's here. Okay? And then we have the quarter. Okay? So quarter, half, full, inside, full. Half, quarter. Okay, that's okay. So that's why we call this a 50 50. Okay, it's called a 50 50 because I have half of the full. 100%. This is right here. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's how I think about the hand positions in my head. So I think of the clinch in shapes. You have the outside line on the clinch. Okay, you have the inside line. So this was the outside line, this is the inside line, right? Okay, you also have, we were talking about low line, you have the low line or the high line. Okay, so it's just a big circle. So we have outside line, inside line, high line, low line. Same thing is true for inside boxing. You have inside line, the high line, or the low line. Everything's the same. So don't overcomplicate it. So it's not like, oh, this do this technique for this thing. You're either going to occupy the high line space or the low line space or you're going to occupy the inside space or the outside space. So if my opponent is taller, and he's occupying the outside space and the high line space, so what do I want then? The inside, low line space. Inside, low line space. Okay? If I'm dealing with uh, someone closer to my size, okay? Um, your name, sir? Shane. So if I'm done, and then he has the tight space here, and he's in here, and he's kind of occupying the tight. So he's where? Where is he? He's on the high line, close. So what do I want? I want low line, but outside. I'd be out here. Could I have another hook? Does that make sense to everybody? So you have to take what is available to you. I use the same concept when I teach inside boxing. I teach inside boxing as a separate curriculum. Uh, Completely separate from time crunch. Okay. But I just want everyone to understand that's all the hand positions are. And then everything else is off balancing. That's all it is.
Okay, if you make it more complicated than that, it's really hard to understand. Like, this is this position, this is this family, and then we're jiu-jitsu people, so we're going to name it all. Okay? 18 times. Yeah, 18 times. But Thai boxers, they're like, because they don't have English as their first language, they're literally like, no, you, do this. You, do this. No, no, don't. Get the head. And then they're just telling, they're telling me through hand gestures. So I've had to kind of create a language for it without having uh, the, the, the proper vernacular. Okay? So I am speaking Thai clinch with an accent. Okay, <laughs> I just want to clarify that. Does that make a little more sense to everybody? So high line, low line, inside line, outside line. This is also true for grappling. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept, am I, am I wrong? It's the same concept even when you're wrestling. Okay, yeah. so I just want everyone to think about that. Let's keep doing this one real quick. And then I'm gonna show what if it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Now I'm gonna turn a little bit and I'm just gonna throw her past that. Okay, if she doesn't base, that's a really easy need. So no, I'm not even tripping. I'm literally just throwing them over my leg. Just boop, because if this leg is really strong, maybe I turn in the other way. You know what I have when you were a kid? And your like, sibling came up behind you and hit you in the back of the knees, so you just buckle? They just need to jerk brothers. I can't. <laughs> I'll do that now. <laughs> so that's what you're doing. So I'm coming in here, she's making this like really, really strong. I can't bump from the front, so I'm gonna bump from behind. Bump from behind as I throw her past it. That's the name. So one of the worst mistakes I ever did was teach a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt the clinch at this level. Uh, he's a black belt now. He's one of the guys I train with. He started with me five years ago. He's like, ah, I just wanted to work out, you know, just in case, because I want to change things up. I've been a brown belt in Jiu-Jitsu, you know, I've been training Jiu-Jitsu a long time. He started doing Thai with me. After one month, he comes up to me and says, I am so sorry, I want to apologize. I'm like, for what? He's like, this is so much more technical than I thought it was. And I'm like, every grappler says that. And once they really delve into Thai boxing, especially when they get to the clinch. And it was the worst mistake ever made because I watched this jujitsu guy, because his framing is so good, wreck people with this move. All he does is bump, they step back, he plums, and then they just can't get out. I, wa I watch him wreck Thai boxers. Okay, so I'm just saying, it's very, very effective. So here, step in, I bump. Oh no, she's defending. I'm gonna bump inside and I'm gonna shove back, create space. Wow. I step, I bump, I do this, I try to throw him over my leg, he step, that, see that, that, I was so dumb. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the base. Yeah, you would have to, right? So I hear, and you base. Now I'm gonna chase Caleb with one of the earlier ones. Okay. That's very jujitsu of you. Sorry, you're not supposed to do that in time. Just let him fall and then be like, oh. okay. But does that make sense? Yeah, so we're trying to create that motion. So I bump, didn't work. I throw over this leg. He steps back to base. I step into the middle. This goes back to one of the earlier ones we did. So we're chasing them. Okay? Because the idea is once we get them in motion, we want to keep them in motion. Any questions? Let's rep it out. So one more time. So I step in, because I'm trying to go back to that original C step. And I can feel he's too strong. So I try to bump. Oh no, that's not working either. Go back to this one. He steps out. Oh no, here. Now remember I pull the person on top of me and then I just turn my shoulders. One, <laughs> two. <laughs> I assume you would use this for a knee if you didn't want to use the dump just like you did before. Well, exactly. Right? So. Like I said, this could be the knee, or this can be coming, because maybe you don't base out super wide. Because if you're base out really wide, I have tons of space to me. But if you just base out a little bit, say if I throw you past my leg, that's when I do this guy. Uh, yeah. So the wider the base, the more likely you are to throw the knee? Yes. Okay. More space. Yeah, that makes sense. And I do a lot, I do a lot of long knees, yeah. so like I play a lot here. Right. And this is where I play clinch. And the reason why is because I don't like the ties to hold my head. Mm -hmm. So this is where I play clinch. So sometimes I grab so my I head. Get a hold of you. Uh -huh. That makes sense. Like, I do that all the time. That's what I like to do. So they can't get a grip on you. Exactly. Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> that makes sense. Because I was trying to play in here with them, and they're all shorter than me. Right. So once they get my head down, mm -hmm. and they get their head underneath my Brutal. chin, and they got to the side, I'm screwed. Is that a nail back? No, you're yeah. right. Okay. Makes sense. So I try to be tall. So if you're tall, be tall. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So does that, that answer your question? I think so. Okay, so remember, we're going back to one of the earlier ones. So I try to do this. I throw them over the lake. They base. I step in. And turn my shoulders just like we did with the earlier one. 
Yeah. So see how it's coming full circle now? Yeah. Yeah. So see how all of this kind of plays together. And all of this, you're also mean. What we talked about earlier, the other person's mean, you should be jerking them anyway. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Every failed takedown is a free knee. Step in there. Go back for that right. That's the problem. And I know this because one of my fighters fought a guy from Beta. He's winning the fight in a clinch. One elbow. That's all it took. Broke his nose. They called the whole fight because it's turned into style rules. So instead, when we pummel inside, here first, so pummel inside, monitor the bicep, then go. Come inside, monitor the bicep, then go. Monitor the bicep, then go. And you can add this to the wrestling, if you're wrestling, mm -hmm. and just do this first before you go. So you're just so you're aware that the elbow exists. Right. So if you're not monitoring the bicep, you are getting elbowed in the face. And it doesn't take a lot. This is this is nothing. Okay? Um, anyone watch um well any anyone watch so in Thailand, no one really throws elbows unless they mean business. So that first round is like a warm-up round, but as soon as someone throws elbows, it's like, oh, we're throwing elbows now. <laughs> and, and stuff gets serious. So you should be aware of it. So I just want everyone to try this real thing. So we're gonna stay in our kind of good structure. I'm still seeing a lot of people do this and this. Toes out, my knees track my feet just to protect my knees. Here, we're gonna go inside, monitor the bicep. I don't have to grab, because if you have gloves on, here, and then turn. Here, here. Just add that. Okay, just to think about where are the elbows. Okay, just think about that when you're pummeling inside. And then we're gonna get into some pummeling states, okay? Okay. 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 Here, here. Like that's, now we go back. Now it's Caleb's turn. Perfect. Do you like that? Yeah, I don't like that one too. That's my favorite. Okay, now, then once you're comfortable with that, then add it with the off balance. You do the one, two, three. You off balance, then move to your pump instruction. Do you see what I'm doing here? And that's how you can start building kind of the sensitivity without wrecking your neck like you would in Thailand. Because in Thailand, there, it's very difficult to learn the clinch in Thailand. One, most of them don't speak English, which is why we're here. Um, two, it's kind of the old school jujitsu mentality is they throw you in there and you just, excuse my language, you just get your ass kicked until you figure it out. So it's very difficult to learn because they're not going to explain it to you. You're just going to get dumped. You're going to get mean. You're just going to have to deal with it. I hope your brain falls good. <laughs> and it's on. It's in the ring, by the way. It's in the canvas. It's not on, 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 on jujitsu mats. So, but this is a great way to train a clinch without resistance. Just to kind of get familiar with it. You go, I go. Building that sensitivity. Building it out of motion. So we start with pummeling. We go to our pummel structure whether it's plumb or whatever position you like to do. Then, we pummel three times, I off balance and go to right pummeling strike. So if I'm gonna be here, one, two, three. There's my knee, that's mine. Now it's Caleb's turn. One, two, oh, nice. Perfect, that's a good one, right? <laughs> yeah. You worked me on it. Yeah, so, uh, so does that make sense to everybody? So this is how you kind of put it all together and then you can use it now that I'm leaving after this today. It's because I'm not going to be here all the time. So does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Excellent. Guys, I see a lot of people still doing this. If you're doing this, you already messed up. You're not getting your head back. And if you're doing this nonsense to get out, you are definitely getting me to the face. So the first thing you want to do is make sure I want to close the gap. So I want to control the hips. Now when I walk myself in, I'm going to change my face and then come up. This is where I want to be. I'll be here or here. Okay, this is where I want to be, either here or here. Here, this is to monitor all those. Mm -hmm. This is to make sure they don't go back. That's always what it's for. It's not to dump you. Okay, now, like, the one that worked the best for me in Thailand, and usually I do this one as soon as someone puts one hand on my neck, 
is the crossface. Mm -hmm. Just this. Okay? Now, typically when I have the crossface, then I can just kind of make space, monitor, pummel back inside. That's your first one. So usually when someone puts one hand on my neck, I'm already here. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm already here is because I like to do long knees. So like I said, I like to long knee here, and then I'll monitor here. So I can't yeah, like exactly. Yeah. So I want to monitor. Wait. You gotta yell. <laughs> Doesn't count as yell. Okay. But that's my first one that I do. I like the cross face. It's the only one that I pulled off on the ties all the time. And they were trying to power through it because they'd never seen it before. And there's Why one. Is that? Why don't they use that one? I don't know. Some I, don't know. I, I wasn't at FA, I wasn't at one of the better clinch gyms. Uh, I wasn't at uh, there's a there's a gym. So there's a couple of gyms that are known for the clinch, like uh, Diesel Noy down okay. in Patia. Okay. Uh, Sky Piercing Knee, I believe is his nickname. <laughs> um, so I think he's so. so uh, um, or FA Group in Bangkok. They do an hour of clinch before they do the pads. <clears throat> I was at a smaller gym for, for Thai. But uh, when I worked with my buddy Tep, I would do this and he'd try to power through it. But I have long arms. But I can see yeah. probably do it to most people. But I have pretty long arms. Right. So this is really strong for me. Right. And then usually, typically, I'll monitor here and then pummel back inside. Makes okay. sense. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. oh no, okay, that's a big strong guy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook on the neck, I'm gonna step to the side, and all I'm gonna do is pop my shoulder. Okay, and I wanna finish with that one because I know this is an MMA school, and typically an amateur tie, but you're not an elbow anyway. <laughs> so, but this is a pain because once you feel all this pressure, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't move. It's hard to get his face. So instead, if I can't go inside, that means I have to go outside. Remember, we talked about that earlier. We have the inside lines and the outside lines. So I'm going to step to the side. I hook here. The reason I step to the side, I can even monitor the knee if I need to. Okay. Now, all I'm going to do is pop my shoulder. So I keep this, and I'm going to open up my chest. That's all I want. The harder they hold, the better this works. Does it feel good, doesn't yeah, it? No, I'm here to turn my shoulder. Right? <laughs> That's the whole idea. Yeah. Okay, so here, I step to the side, and then open. Yeah. Now be careful, like guys, this really does wreck the person's shoulders and the person who's holding on, so please be delicate with this. I know Caleb was going to let go, so that's why I used it. Okay. Don't, don't be stupid and hold on too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one doesn't go good, but it's very effective. So everything else still applies. But this isn't so much just like so tight, you can't even, you're like, I can't pull inside, I can't do any of this. So we can't go inside, we have to go outside. Okay. So we have a cross face, pushing the face, and coming around the outside. These are the three I still use to this day. And these are the only three that worked in Thailand for me. So, uh, you should use them. <laughs> I didn't quite catch where are you grabbing with the hand, because that's how you do a lat. Net yeah, shoulder. lat from that or shoulder depends on the length and the length of the person. Okay. It's okay, because if I'm dealing with someone like a lot more barrel chefs, then maybe I can just get this. Okay. But if you have the glove on, we're just going to hook like this. So if I make so it's not the head itself, then? No, it's not here. It's okay. not here. Okay. Good question. That's why okay. I step to the side. Okay. So I have more so reach. Because I used to do it like this, and that doesn't work as well. So if okay. I step to the side, I have more leverage. Mm -hmm. 